When the metal roof of your barn or your shed ends up looking like this, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that it's time to replace it. So the project for the next couple of days is to renew this roof. I want to use this space for storage, but at the moment the roof is letting in water like a sieve and it's also just about to collapse as well. While I'm replacing the roof, I'm going to take the opportunity to sort out the ground to make it flat with a load of type one and then put a thin layer over the rest just to tidy it up. But to do that and compact it, I'm going to have to use my whacker plate, which I'm not overly keen on because of this roof. You see, at the moment, without any snow loading or wind loading like a storm, I don't think that's going to collapse. I wouldn't be so sure with the vibration of the whacker plate, putting vibration into the structure and rattling that roof. I don't really fancy working underneath it with a whacker plate when I'm looking at something like that. So there's a sequence I'm going to have to follow. And the sequence is take off the crinkly tin roof, then take down the structure, and only then I can tidy up the floor before putting everything back. I can't do any of that though until I get rid of all this junk. At the moment I've got a combination of inherited junk on the left and my own junk on the right. I removed the better stuff to a slightly less waterproof structure for the time being and the real rubbish will find itself into my next skip. My plan for this area is to be able to store non-critical and non-valuable equipment rather than have it cluttering up either my workshop or areas around my house. It's not easy to get a vehicle anywhere near this, so I don't think this inexpensive gear that I'm going to store will go missing. It's really not going to be worth anyone's time and effort. So that's the area just about clear. The only thing I've got left is this big sheet of broken glass, which I think is going to collapse on me if I touch it. I'm inclined to leave it a day or so until I get the next skip in, then it can go straight into the skip. So what I'm going to do now is get on top of the roof using a ladder and cut off the fixings of the crinkly tin roof with a disc cutter. And I'm going to use these cutting discs from Trend today. And just two things about cutting discs. First of all, you have to make sure that the maximum revolution speed exceeds the speed of your disc cutter. And on here, the maximum RPM is 13,300, which is more than the 9,000 RPM that my angle grinder works at, so I know that that's safe. The other thing about metal cutting discs is that they come in different thicknesses. This is a box of 10, one millimeter, and this is a box of 10, two and a half millimeter. Now the idea is that really you should use the thinnest one possible if you can get away with it. If it's too heavy, then you've got to use something thicker. The thinner one is going to put less grief onto your angle grinder, because mine is a cordless one, I should get more life out the battery. But if this just doesn't work, then I'm just going to have to resort to the slightly thicker one so I need to get up there and see if I can cut these fixings off. I really like the no tool method for changing blades on my new DeWalt cordless angle grinder especially when you're away from your workshop and tools it makes changing discs easy. Before I start any metal cutting in this dry summer weather I remember my old site hot works procedure and arm myself with a bucket of water and a charged hose, just in case a spark set off any adjacent dry grass, which there's lots of all around me. The formerly galvanised, but now rusty roof is hot to the touch in this midday sun, so I just find the fixings and start cutting.
Where I started on the end of the roof quickly turned out to be the easy bit as with another lower roof beside me I have to attack these sheets in the middle from underneath. I have no choice, I can't do it from the other side of this wall which is fine but every time you damage a sheet in a plume of dust and rubbish falls through making the whole process very unpleasant. I know once I get one or two sheets off, I can then get above the roof again and carry on with my original technique, which is a lot quicker and far less dirty. With the last of the sheets coming down, I can now get to the overhanging trees which had eluded me earlier in the year. I took a chance and cut the light in and power cables, assuming the power was dead, as it was fed from a building that doesn't exist anymore, and then removed the light bulb before it got smashed in the demolition. With everything finally down, I did a quick clear up of the existing surface and then had the realisation that even though I could work around this broken piece of glass to bring down the roof, I do need to move it so I can lay the sub base so it still has to go, just carefully. So on to day two of the first part of this project and yesterday was a pretty hard day. Not only was it over 25 degrees and pretty humid which was pretty hard to work in but taking down a roof you get all the rubbish that's on the roof as well. It reminds me of taking down plasterboard from an upstairs bedroom ceiling. It's not the ceiling you have to worry about it's the years of debris that's in the loft that comes down with it so that was pretty nasty. Today is going to be a lot cleaner but not necessarily easier. You see, I've got two tonne of Type 1 sitting about 70 metres away that I've got to bring in here. And I'm not looking forward to it. This is the third time this summer that I've shifted large quantities of material by hand, and I can confirm it's back-breaking work, especially when the weather's hot. I'm only filling the wheelbarrow around about 60 to 70% full as I've got rough ground and undulations between the load and the tip points and I just can't cope with a full load. When I dump each load out it looks small and pathetic so I start spreading them which gives me a false feeling of achievement, anyway enough to keep me going. An hour later, the first bag is just about empty, which shows at least I'm doing something.
This is one of those jobs that you need to be determined and just get into a rhythm and hope before long that you're making a dent in the material pile. nearly two full bulk bags of type one I've just brought in. I'm not aiming for any particular thickness, I really just want to get it sort of leveled and tidy the thing up. Now if you're doing this on a drive or a patio you would be aiming for a certain thickness to give you a certain strength but even if I'm not going for a certain thickness I still want it properly compacted and there's two things you need to be able to compact type one one is a plate compactor or a whacker plate and the other thing is moisture now this type one at the moment because we're in such a dry period has obviously been sitting in the builder's yard and is absolutely bone dry so i'm gonna to have to put quite a lot of water on it now on site in the construction industry we aim for about five percent by weight which adds up to quite a lot if you've got four ton of material but as a diy you don't have to worry too much about that but you do really need to get it pretty well damp too much water will send it a bit mushy but on a day like this I think it's going to be evaporating as quick as I put it down after all this work when I finally got around to wetting the sub base I know we're heading for a hose pipe ban and supplies of water are a problem but I think someone in the water company knew what I was doing and started cutting the water intermittently just to wind me up. I carry out a number of passes with the bare minimum of water in the stone. Not sure if I'm going to get any more. When this tight one was delivered, it looked very coarse, but it's very difficult to tell in these bulk bags, as during transport, sometimes the smaller stones move down and all you can see is the big stones on the surface. But now compacting it, I can see that it really is coarse and not bonding together like it should. I water once more and keep compacting it until I see no movement on the surface. Well, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not really happy with the Type 1. However much I'm compacting it, it's still really open graded. There's some areas that I'm happy with that are bonded together and given quite a nice flat surface, but the majority of it is still really open because there's such a high percentage of large stones relative to the small stones and the dust, or the fines as we call it, that it hasn't got a chance to all bind together and end up with a nicely compacted smooth surface, which is the whole point of Type 1 and the way it's graded. So I think I'm going to be having a chat to the supplier about that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on the channel and please subscribe. And look out for part two of this build where I'll be putting up the timbers and finishing the roof coming very soon. Before then, I think I've just got another three loads of Type 1 to bring in. Ah. <sighs>